In Old Testament theology today, there is an ongoing discussion of whether there is a center. That is, is there some common theme that runs through the Old Testament's theological teachings and uniting them? Um, a good option that was presented now, 90 years or so ago, was the idea of covenant. But it's hard to find covenant in Proverbs or in Ecclesiastes or in many of the prophets. So, uh, maybe not. And so it's gone on and on with a lot of different suggestions. I think in the end, probably the uh, scholar Gerhard Hassel made the best suggestion that the center of Old Testament theology is Yahweh. <laughs> he is God. But there's been another proposal that I think is very significant for us as we think about Advent. And that is the promise. Running right through the Old Testament is a series of promises and fulfillments. And each fulfillment becomes, in a sense, another promise. And on it goes, and on it goes. But is it just promises, or is it a promise? Dr. Walter Kaiser has proposed that, in fact, the promise is the center of Old Testament theology. Well, I could raise a question or two about that, but I certainly agree that the promise is the thread running through the Old Testament. You say, what promise? The promise that begins already in Genesis chapter 3 as God is speaking to Eve in her fallen condition and says that her child will crush the head of the serpent. Well, that's very mysterious. Who is that? What are we talking about? But then comes another promise in Genesis chapter 12 when God says to Abram, I'm going to give you that baby you long for, and I'm going to give you that land that you long for, but I'm going to give you something else. Your family will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Hmm. Your child will crush the serpent's head. Your family will bless the world. By the time the Hebrew people entered Egypt, they were 70 people. And by the time they left Egypt, they were a great nation. That part of the promise had been fulfilled. The baby had come in Abram's own lifetime. The family had come by the time of the Exodus. And when they got the land, it's as though they sort of lost focus. Well, we got what we came for, God. You can go do something else now. And instead of going forward, they were caught in a downward spiral. That's the book of Judges. What about that third promise? Your family is going to be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. God made another promise, a promise to David. Like all good ancient Near Eastern monarchs, David decided he wanted to build a monument. He wanted to build a house to his God. And God responded very strangely. He said, I don't need a house. I've lived in a tent these hundreds of years and that's been fine. But I'll tell you what, David, I'm going to make a house for you. Your descendants are going to be on the throne of Israel in blessing forever. Hmm. Yes, now the people of Israel have regained a focus on the future. Oh, and it's amazing that the family of David remained on the throne of Judah for 350 years. There are very, very few dynasties, perhaps some in China, but very few dynasties that lasted that long the promise. So it's fascinating to look at the structure of the book of the Old Testament. The Pentateuch, first five books, ends with a promise that there will be a prophet who is greater than Moses. 
The historical books in the Hebrew order, the last book is Chronicles. And the book of Chronicles ends with Jehoiakim, the last of the Davidic line, being taken out of the prison, given a lifetime pension by the king of Babylon. Virtually all scholars are agreed that that point is being made that somehow the Davidic dynasty didn't die when Jerusalem was destroyed and there were no more Davidic kings on the throne in Jerusalem. It's the same in our English order. What's the last book? Malachi. And Malachi is about the one who is to come. The one who is the Lord and who is the messenger of the Lord. The one who is the messenger of the covenant. Hmm. The one who will come like the sun rising. The sun that sucks the last moisture out of the dying stubble, but the sun that is a blessed healer for the one who is wounded. And so, running throughout the Old Testament is this sense, it's not over yet. It's not done yet. On one hand, the Old Testament is a story of tragedy. The failure of the Hebrew people ever to be able to keep their covenant with any consistency. Again and again and again they fail. They go into exile and God in grace brings them back and they sin again. But, but, the Old Testament is not only a story of tragedy, it's a story of continuing hope. God is not done with us. He's going to bring that promise. The child who will crush the head of the serpent. The descendant who will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. The son of David who will rule in majesty and faithfulness and unfailing love on the throne of David, the one who is to come. The Old Testament is a tragedy, but it's also a book of endless, glorious hope. He is coming.